So I'm finally getting around to making a bandsaw jig that I've been wanting to make for several years. And this design that I came up with will allow me to have several jigs into one. The design will consist of kind of a normal bandsaw table jig of uh, a few layers of plywood, a track, a bracket underneath that will hold the table down, and a T-track. As for the measurement, it's really up to you, your bandsaw, and what size table you want. When I was making the hold down clamp, I really wanted it to be sturdy, so I made a piece that would go the whole length of the board, uh, minus a section at the left end. And this serves two purposes. It's a dedicated stop, and it's the hold down clamp. And since you won't see the top layer of this board after I put the second layer on top, I'm just going to screw straight down and I'm just marking out every few inches uh, for a screw hole. As for the miter slot, I like using these HDPE material and they work really well. I have them on a bunch of jigs in my shop. They slide really well. They don't expand, they don't contract, they're easy to cut, they're cheap. I get them on Amazon if you're interested, you just need to get the right size for your spot. I used my bandsaw fence, which is perpendicular to the blade, you want to make sure about that, to make the curve cut for the blade before adding my HDPE track. And I used some CA glue, some Starbond medium, just to quickly tack the HDPE track to the underside of the board. Here's a tip. When you use screws to fasten HDPE runners, the sides can bulge out when you tighten the screws down. This can make the runner stick or stop in the miter slot. So to fix this, um, you can just take off a little bit amount of material at each screw point with either sandpaper or what I use is a card scraper or cabinet scraper, and that works really well. And it makes it a perfect fit. So now with these blocks in place, the table is really sturdy when it's in position and it will not come off or uh, tip to one side, especially if there's like a heavy log or, you know, the weight is off balance. The next step is extremely important. You need to align the center of your T-track to the very front tip of the blade teeth. And conveniently, most T-tracks already have the center marked out. You can see a line here in the middle. Also, to accommodate any future changes as in blade thicknesses or uh, the blade may wander or something like that, I didn't put the T-track right up against the blade. I left a little room. And in an attempt to have some dust collection, I used a Forstner bit to uh, drill out a hole, but once I installed the T-Track, I had to take it back off and look at it. In order to determine how wide I want the T-Track section to be in the table, I'm switching gears right now and making the slider mount for the T-Track, which I'm making from plexiglass. Well, 
layers of plexiglass. I didn't have one thick enough. To get the right thickness I needed, I ended up using three layers of the three thirty seconds of an inch thick plexiglass. For the locking mechanism, I used a machine screw and a bolt, and the bolt also was used to center the locking mechanism on the plexiglass. For the adjacent wood strips, I used an oak strip and a poplar strip. The poplar strip is sized for a ruler that will be added later, and the oak is a little bit wider to add more support. I found this acrylic, uh, I guess it's a jewelry stand, and it was exactly the right diameter that I needed for the hole that I drilled and I just cut off some slices of that. But you could also just make your own with hole saws or something like that. Now, to use this non-marring insert for cutting circles on the jig, I carved in the crosshair lines on the insert and filled those lines in with red acrylic paint with uh, wiping the exhaust paint off with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. Then to attach this to your piece, you just align the crosshairs with the crosshairs on your piece and use some double stick tape. In addition to the non-marring insert, I made a pin insert from a nail. Next, I moved on to finish attaching the walnut and poplar strips in the T-Track section from underneath with some recessed screws. I didn't glue these in in case I wanted to change them later on. I didn't glue in the top layer of plywood either in case I wanted to remove those at some point. This section that I'm cutting out is a removable throat plate that will act as a zero clearance. We'll have dust collection holes all around the blade and it can be easily replaced later on with a new plate if it gets damaged or if I want to change my bandsaw blade out to say a thicker blade. And another really cool aspect of having the throw plate here is that you can keep a bunch of them on hand and label them and switch them out with different size bandsaw blades. The slider works great, easy to tighten down, and it is really accurate with the measuring tape. When the time comes, I may add a micro adjuster to the front of the stop here. So if I put on a new blade that passes by the T-Track center, I can adjust it so it's back on track. Or you can add some shims down here to do the same kind of thing. I also at some point want to make a woodworm screw insert so I can just screw it on the bowl blank, cut the bowl blank round, and then just put it over onto the squirrel truck on the lathe. I did make a sliding miter sled for the uh, bandsaw jig out of uh, a bunch of pieces of uh, poplar and plywood and some drawer slides, which this is a jig in itself on a jig. <laughs> I can add round cutting, log cutting, resawing, milling small slabs, etc. The list goes on and on. I've also rounded various bowl blanks 
natural edge slabs with the pin insert and with the non-marking insert, three quarter inch MDF board, three quarter inch plywood, thin plywood, and various thicknesses of plexiglass. Well, I know some people may think that this jig is a little bit uh, much for the bandsaw, but it is really sturdy, a nice big work area, and it is absolutely fantastic. I have used it on several projects you might have seen already, and it just works great. It has definitely added a lot of efficiency to the shop. So this is a 3 8 inch bandsaw blade that I use. It's kind of my go-to size that I just keep on here most of the time. I could do resawing, I could do smaller circles, larger circles. It's a, just a good universal size that I use. Also, I don't believe I mentioned this in the video earlier on. I can do uh, circle diameters from an inch and a half all the way out to I don't know, like 36 inches in diameter, which is almost like, like the max of my lathe, so it's perfect for me. And one of my other main points was to leave this on my bandsaw most of the time and just switch out accessories. If you do see any accessories in future videos that I've added to this jig, you can always go to my social media like Facebook or Instagram or one of those places and I will post any upgrades that I have done to uh, jigs and things like that. I know this video was a little on the long side but it was a very large project and there was a lot to show and a lot of information that I didn't want you to miss out on just in case you want to build something like this for your shop. So as always I hope you stay safe in your shop at all times. Take care and thank you. Mm -hmm.